¿Qué tal, muchachos? Isela here with the Truck Boss Show next to Nikki. Hey, everyone. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to the Truck Boss Show. Yes, and like always, you know, bringing the good stuff to you, keeping you up to date, what's going on in the industry today. That's right. And we're just going to jump right into it. There's a city that nicks truck parking on the streets. Now they want to kick trucks out of vacant parking lots. So let me tell you that a city in Illinois recently voted to prevent trucks from parking on city streets. Well, now they've turned their attention to trucks used in parking lots of business, which have been closed for years. Now, city officials in Joliet recently banned truck parking on city streets, officially eliminating the permit, which said no one would apply for it. and hadn't applied for it in decades since 1987. Well, now the city council members, they said they've noticed several trucks parking in empty parking lots like Kmart and Sears. So, Nikki, my question on that is if they cannot park on city streets, the permit's no longer there. Mm -hmm. They need to rest and they're in the city or if they, I mean, that's it. Their time is cut off. They got mm -hmm. to stop. What are they going to do? I know it's, it's, it's very mind blowing that they can't park in these areas anymore. We need more parking. They, we have to have more parking truckers. They're, they're multiplying and it, it, it's an issue that needs to be fixed. Yes. I think it's so they make it hard for them. They're already. You know, there's a lot of other struggles that are going on. And with the parking, God, that just really, it really gets under my skin. And I'm not the driver, but it does get me thinking, well, what are we supposed to do with them? Absolutely. Where are they supposed so, to go? And if you have any opinions or comments on this, drop it in the comment thread below because we want to know what you have to say yes, about it. Yes, we want to so. know exactly what you think. So you feel free and let us know. <laughs> so, Isela, we have some awesome segments for you all this week. And I'm going to let you start off with your wonderful one. I do. You know what? A big, big, big shout out to Roland with Texas Chrome Shop. Awesome guy. You know what? I finally got to meet him and he gave us an awesome interview, but I love the truck that they actually built. Now, if you don't believe me, I'm gonna let you check it out for yourself. How's it going? Isela here with the Truck Boss Show live at Gats. Well, today we are with a special friend. This is Roland and Roland is with Texas Chrome Shop. Roland, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be here. I feel like I've just met a celebrity here. Like, oh my God, if you did not know, Roland and the family, they are very popular. They are on the Discovery Channel. Tell me about your, your um, y'all show. Well, we originally did a show with uh, Speed TV, Speed Channel, which was American Trucker. Yes. We did a 30 minute uh, episode with them called Hauling a Style. So somebody <laughs> contacted us from a, a group from LA. So they came and they filmed us. They did like a pilot. And then uh, two months later, they called us and said, Discovery wants y'all to do a full blown show in Spanish. So it was like the first time we're like, uh, they're, they're just playing around. It's not really going to happen, but eventually it did. Now we've done three seasons, going on our fourth. Oh my God, that's pretty awesome. When I found out about you guys, I was very, very um, surprised because I didn't know. And I was like, ah, that's our people. You know, we're moving on up. <laughs> we're yeah. doing, we're doing big things. But Roland, I want to talk about a lot of the amazing things that you guys do. And behind us, you have, what is this right back here? Uh, behind us is a 2002 Peterbilt, which was a conversion. This truck originally had a sleeper on it and it was converted kind of like a limo truck. The owner, Stephen Day from Austin, Texas, wanted to do something different. He says, I want to take a truck out of the summers. I want to go to Wyoming and I want to go to the Grand Canyon and pull my RV. So build something that's going to be 18 wheeler wise where I can take my family, user friendly. So this is the end result. We call it Big Pete and my dad calls it the limo truck. So a little bit of both. A little bit about let me tell you that it is um it's very interesting i've never seen nothing like that before yeah. and for someone to have that kind of mentality say listen you know what i want something special normally we want to go for well i'm going to say soccer mom you know minivan or like a big truck or something where you can hook up an rv but this guy went above and beyond that yeah i mean it's a lot of work uh, originally of course it had tandem axles now it's a single axle we put a western hauler bed i mean the paint on the truck is phenomenal it's just tuxedo black plenty of clear we totally redid the inside. We put a bed in the back. We put four captain chairs, stereo system out of the wall. I mean, just crazy built, crazy truck, a lot of hours, a lot of work. But the customer's happy and we're happy and something different. That's why we're here at the Dallas Truck Show to show it off. 
So now you said a lot of hours. How long did it really take to do all this? Uh, honestly, about a year and a half. A year and a half? Yeah, I don't think I can count how many hours <laughs> right. exactly, but that's I know a lot. <laughs> actually a year and a half, so that's how long it took. Oh my goodness. Now, is it okay if we kind of get like a close-up of, of the inside and the back? Because we want to show course. off your work. So show it if off. James, if you want to come on this way so we can kind of check this this awesome truck out, I think it's amazing if you want the inside. I like the chrome. Now, you guys did the chrome and all that great stuff, right? Yeah, a lot of the stuff that you see on the truck is stuff that is sold at, at our store, Texas Chrome Shop. And uh, bolt-on accessories, which anybody can pull off the highway, go to our store and buy steering wheels, foot pedals, and then you get to your fancier stuff. Like, as you can see, the foot pedals, they're one off, they're stainless steel with a custom uh, Peterbilt emblem on there. A little higher, but we have your traditional pedals and we have the higher end, which is like the ones we did on this truck. Well, I think this truck is amazing. Whenever you told me earlier, the limo truck, I literally said, how, how is that possible? And then we look in the back. Well, I looked in the back and I said, oh my God, it does look like a limo. So if you want to get that in there, James, check that out for us so the crowd can see that he is not kidding. This yeah, is the real see, deal. Uh, what we have here, we have four captain chairs, the rear seat swivel to this side, to the other side. We have our enclosures here, which are separate speakers on the bottom towards the top. We have a total of six screens, one in the front, four in the back. It's five screens. And then one in the middle, which is six. Plenty of power. We have exactly 3,000 true wattage. Everything here is DP drive, except for our stereo head, which is Pioneer. And the guy just wanted something that's gonna be good for his family, good for him. While his, kid, his kids are in the back, they can plug up their uh, PlayStation, put it back there watch their TV separate and the deck can listen to stereo up in the front. It's a lot of hours of work. A lot of stuff that is cool on this truck is most of those trucks out there, they have diamond plate, aluminum. Pretty much the whole side of the truck is wrapped in 304 stainless, which is your battery box up in the front, your uh, tank skin covers, your custom steps with some foot pads, and then of course your rear box with stainless steel covers. And you know what? That is a lot. That's pretty awesome. I like the flag in the back. That is Texas pride right well, there. We're real proud. We're from Texas, so we got to show off a I little bit of that. I see that. Right? Everything in Texas is big, though, right? That's, it. That's right. <laughs> like the truck. <laughs> right? Hey, if he's looking for children that he'd like to adopt, grandkids or something, he can always call me. I'm, I'm, I'm adoptable. Go. There you <laughs> Roland, go. if you know, if, if there's someone out there that is interested in what you do and they want to reach you, where can they find you? Oh, they can find us on uh, social media, Texas Chrome Shop. And then, of course, our website, texaschromeshop.com, or they can call the office, 210-622-5757. At our shop, we do everything from painting a truck, putting a bumper on, collision work. We do it all. It's a one-stop shop. Roland, thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And this is it on the Truck Boss Show. See you on the next. A big thanks to Roland. Nikki, Texas Chrome Shop, I think, did it big with this um, limo truck or what? Yes, you know, it that's what he so called cool. it, the limo it truck. It was blacked out. The chrome was super awesome. I think it was, I'm so glad you finally got to yes. talk to him because <laughs> she has been on him for a long time. Yes, and I have. It was rewarding getting to have that conversation and meet him. So we hope to be able to work with him at his Chrome Shop in the future. So yes. Roland, we're coming for you. Don't forget. <laughs> so a couple of weeks ago, the FMCSA announced that on January 6th of 2020, clearinghouse implementation begins. Mandatory use of the clearinghouse goes into effect. Employers must report certain drug and alcohol program violations and can conduct electronic queries in the clearinghouse. Manual inquiries with previous employers are still required to cover the preceding three years. The Commercial Drivers Licensed Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse will improve highway safety by helping employers, FMCSA, state driver licensing agencies, and state law enforcement to quickly and efficiently identify drivers who are not legally permitted to operate commercial motor vehicles, CMVs, due to drug and alcohol program violations. This secure online database will provide access to real-time information, ensuring that drivers committing these violations complete the necessary steps before getting back behind the wheel or performing any other safety sensitive functions. Isela, I think this is absolutely wonderful. This gives 
employers transparency with anybody that they're looking to hire yes, and it it's going to be safer for everybody out on the road just having that peace of mind knowing that they're driving with people who are passing their drug and alcohol screening tests and it i believe it's so important to have that peace of mind i think so too you know it's really important that if you are going to be um on the roads and you know we appreciate all our drivers all our truck yes. drivers you know hands down to you hard work but it is also important that um, safety, safety is what comes in first. And we would like to be safe on the road just as well as we want you to be safe. So I'm, I'm up for it. I think high five. Yes, Thumbs great up. job to the FMCSA. Love it. Yes. And if you have any comments on this, drop it in the uh, comment thread below because we want to know your input or your opinion on this subject. Yeah, that's right. So speaking of the Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse, I had the opportunity to sit down with our friend Dr. Dixon who discusses hair follicle testing and how her thoughts on maybe how it can be implemented into the Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse and maybe dives a little bit deeper into the hair follicle testing and what they can find versus the urine testing. So check this out with Dr. Dixon. Hey everyone, Nikki here at the Truck Boss Show. We are joined by our good friend, Dr. Dixon, a medical examiner out of the TA Petro in Wildwood, Florida with the Driver's Health Clinic. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Dixon. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely, we always love having you on the show. Today, we're gonna to talk about hair follicle drug testing. What is the purpose? So that's a great question. And you may have heard in the news a few weeks ago where they were talking about pushing hair follicle testing. Um, hair follicle testing, basically, when you do any kind of drug, whether it be marijuana or opioids or, you know, the list goes on, um, it grows out into your hair. And your hair grows at about a half an inch per month. And so the regulation when testing is actually to take the hair from the base an inch and a half minimum to give a three month um, look back on whether or not the person has been involved in, in drugs of any sort. And so when we do this, and I know a lot of companies use it right now, um, mm -hmm. but when they do this, it, it just gives them a much clearer idea and it's much harder to get you know false information from a hair follicle than it is a urine test. Gotcha. So are they incorporating this into the DO physical, DOT physical now? Not yet. So the talk in the last few weeks was the fact that they estimate that over 300,000 drivers are on the road faking their urine drug screen right now. And it's incredibly dangerous to be using any sort of drug out there. And again, just because, you know, marijuana is legal in a few states doesn't mean it's legal for our drivers ever. Okay, right. so um, it's not in the DOT exam. Uh, drug testing is actually not in the DOT exam at all. Um, it's the responsibility of the carrier to go ahead and have pre-employment drug testing and then also be part of the consortium. So it's not part of the DOT test. Gotcha. So there's a lot of attention on the possibility of a federal clearinghouse. Is there a possibility that the hair testing could be added? Absolutely. So right now they're talking about the 300,000 drivers out there that they think have missed the drug test or are using well out on the road. And that's just dangerous for everybody. So they are talking about integrating a hair follicle test into the system so that we can monitor and not miss those drivers. It's incredibly dangerous for everybody to have people out there using and people need to remember that, you know, just because it's legal for marijuana in some states doesn't mean it's ever legal for our drivers. Um, when and where I have no idea financially logistically I don't know when that's ever going to happen but do I believe it will I think it will at some point gotcha well Dr. Dixon it's always a pleasure to have you on the show we love hearing your expertise on all the different hot topics and this is definitely a big hot topic right now in trucking For sure and if you if you want to find more intriguing or if you want more intriguing insight with Dr. Dixon you can don't forget to check out our playlist extras on YouTube to find all the amazing content that you want that we just couldn't fit in the show, but it's still very awesome. So um, thanks again, and we'll see you on the next Truck Boss Show. Thanks so much.
Big thanks to Dr. Dixon. We always love having her on the show and getting her insight because she's on the front lines every day with you all and sees the regulations and what's needed. And so it's it's always good to talk to Dr. Dixon yes. about what's going on right now and what she sees daily. Well, it's awesome because she can tell us, um, like you said, what's going on, but also gives you helpful information, tips um, of what to do, you know, so you can go ahead and take action on the necessary things. Absolutely, she knows her stuff. So where is Truck Boss gonna be later on this year, Isabella? Well, we're gonna be super busy. Of course, the end of the year is, 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 is near, but that doesn't mean we stop. We're always yeah. on the hustle. So let me tell you that, we're gonna be going back to the Bandit, Big Bandit, Big Race Series. Yes. I just said I'll miss it, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> We're going to the Bandit Race Series in October, so you know, stay tuned for that information. It's going to be coming up soon because we're going to have so much fun. We're going to bring out Bossa Palooza yes. and all our awesome fun, fun. Um, I, I'm going to say our fun vibe, our entertainment, and everything yes. that we bring out. It's going to be there. Absolutely. And also, we're going to be checking out Speed Garage in Portland, Oregon. We're really excited about that to see all the projects they have going on. They are on YouTube. And They're so awesome. We're really excited about that. So, mm -hmm. Truck Boss Show has a ton of things coming to you. You want to stay tuned. And, Isela, it was fun. Like always. Like always. <laughs> so, don't forget why we do this. Because you're the boss.